Hey guys, what's up? Aru. What we know about Scaramouche is as vague as his disappearance in 2.1. But hey, surprise, he's back in 3.1 and he's got a huge upgrade. Like, huge. Now, we all have assumptions that Dottore and his plans are what made Scaramouche riding Ava 1 possible. But why did the cinematic of Scaramouche end up that way? And why does Scaramouche hate everything so much? And are there any other parties involved with Sumeru's events apart from Dottori and Scaramouche? Other people of interest that may have had a hand in how everything went into place and what else they might be planning for the road ahead. Scarabot, or as I like to call it, Ava 1, a huge puppet slash robot slash creation of who knows how that uses the energy of possibly the Electronosis and Scaramouche himself. In this video, I'll try my best to explain to you guys Scaramouche's current philosophy and perspective towards everything and everyone around him. What led him to do everything he did in the current story, his goals, and the people that could have helped him attain such a level of power. The possible foreshadowing of all these events that present for Scaramouche and the Fatui later down the line and what other greater goals would the Fatui have after finding out about 3.1's academic fiasco. Honestly, I just love talking about puppets and homunculi so allow me to nerd out a bit. Timestamps will be down in the description and the comments below so let's get started. First, we have the opulent husk, which has within it the different philosophical questions that Scaramouche has about himself, the world around him, and more importantly, what made him act the way he is now, and what he truly wants. The entire set fleshes out the cinematic scene of Scaramouche in the latest Archon Quest, all from when he was first created and discarded by A, his time with the five smiths, Raiden Gokaden, and the young boy he met in Tatarasuna, which was the third and final betrayal in his life. What I love about Scaramouche cutscene as well as the entire story in Opulent Husk is his somewhat misunderstanding of the word betrayal. And I think it's a foreshadowing of how the Fatui is going to show him the true meaning of betrayal in the end. The current mindset that he has as well as no one stopping him or giving any sort of advice to him is going to bite back at him after we beat him in 3.2 or in later patches. TLDR Scaramouche is a puppet who was discarded for having emotions and being too fragile. He was then left to wander and look for his own quote-unquote heart, as well as discovering his emotions and basically soul-search for himself as he wanders around Inazuma. Now, throughout his journey, there weren't really any people in his life that were able to give him any sort of guidance of what things are and how they really work, which leads us to Scaramouche's misunderstanding of everything that happened to him. That is, until he met the Fatui, which is the worst place for a puppet who doesn't know anything about the world to be guided by. Something interesting about Scaramouche is that even though he experienced all those betrayals in Inazuma, he still chose to leave and start his country-destroying montage in Sumeru after obtaining the Electronosis. Whether or not his actions in Inazuma and Sumeru are all planned by the Tore from start to finish and Scaramouche is just his pawn, or maybe Scaramouche still has some big gripes with Inazuma and her mother A, especially since he is a puppet with a Gnosis who was discarded by an Archon. One thing is for sure though, he hates everything. Thing. Emotions, humans, and the gods. He wants to destroy and claim it all for himself. And what better way to take revenge as the discarded puppet turned god befitting the power of an archon to rule all in his sights and destroy those who are against him. Now who in the world could possibly possess the ability to create enhanced humans and possibly even gods? Well, the answer lies with the region that created the receptionist of the Adventurer's Guild, Catherine. If you've finished Sumeru's 3.1 story, you'll notice that Dottore is in Sumeru and that he's got his hands dug in deep within the academia. Really deep. Dottore is also known to create his own form of enhanced humans. As mentioned by Tartaglia, he segmented himself into different ages and made prosthesis out of those segments. However, the one in Sumeru, as a lot would assume, is the real Dottore. All the information about Dottore and his prosthesis is mentioned by Tartaglia's voice lines and in Winter Night's Lazo. Dottore is also known to dabble in a bit of ruin construct research, as mentioned in Child's Story Quest. So it's safe to say that Dottore knows how to make robots, bionic life forms, and quite possibly the Scaramouche God. But Dottore's studies into creating gods isn't all on his own, however. We still have two people of interest that might be helping Scaramouche as well. Now, Miss Marionette or Sandrone and her lore in-game is 
vague at best. Tartaglia mentions that she is engrossed in her research and wonders if the machines she is with are part of it. The name Sandroni, however, when typed into the good old internet and clicked on as many links as possible, we arrive at the many speculations of Sandrone being part of the Commedia dell'Art, which is an early form of theater in Italy that also mentions the names of other harbingers that I won't talk about extensively, but Sandrone's representation is through three puppets, namely Sandrone himself, Bologna, his wife, and Sgorg which is his son. All three puppets represent the city of Modena. So far, we can only see two of the three if they actually are a family. Now, call who or which whoever you want, but Sandrone, as well as her entire family, is represented by puppets. At least, usually. Whether or not Sandrone is one of the three puppets, or there is a single person controlling all three of them, or Sandrone is created by someone in the Fatui, namely Dottore, I'll leave it up to you guys. What's interesting is that the robot holding the marionette-looking lady is similar to a ruined guard's design. Along with that, Sandrone, if we put together in the same picture with Catherine, has some semblance with each other. The main takeaway is the hair color though. Now if we put that along with Dottore making enhanced humans together, as well as having a foothold in ruined construct factories, it's not wild to assume that they're in cahoots when it comes to making bionic life forms and whatever automatons that Snesnaya has. But judging from Dottore's lines about Scaramouche, every harbinger within the Fatui has their own agenda. Scaramouche is a puppet created by an Archon and Sandrone looks a lot like Catherine as well as her backstory in the Commedia dell'Art. I'm pretty sure if she's involved in some way, then she has her own plans for why Scaramouche, the sixth harbinger, got that big of an upgrade. Maybe Sandrone wants Scaramouche to be her puppet and put him in the fake god robot and control him from there. You decide. After mentioning Sandrone and Dottore, you would think that we have all the pieces. But you're wrong. There's still one piece of this robot creation team that's missing. No, not Scaramouche. He's the grand guinea pig of their false god robot. What's missing, from all I've said, is the aspect of godhood and the creation of gods. And that's where the big man harbinger Piero comes in. Piero's lore so far is that he failed in trying to gain the favor of a ruler from the past and prevent a previous era kingdom of the past from tearing the veil of sin. As for what this veil of sin might be, maybe they broke the heavenly principles, maybe they found forbidden knowledge just like the Eremites, or maybe they said that the sustainer is just a tuna fish. But Piero has knowledge of the old world, he even mentions bringing it back when he made his promise to Senora. Other knowledge that he has is of the divines as well as maybe knowledge of becoming one. In his discussion with Dottore, Dottore mentions, if your great nation can provide me with resources and time, I can create what you would call gods. Dottore says this statement with some sort of assumption like he doesn't really have any attachment to the word gods or only calls such beings as a namesake. And all the more interesting that they were in a desert, possibly outside of Sumeru City, which has a long history with forbidden knowledge. Knowledge that Piero is very well fond of. Piero's knowledge of what happened in the past is something that Dottore needs to create such gods. And Piero's position as the first harbinger is what allows Dottore to continue his human experimentation and give him what he needed to pursue his research. I would also assume that Piero is the reason Scaramouche is the way he is now, allowing Scaramouche to be absorbed in his anger and hatred for humans and the gods. The same way Senora is fueled by her anger against the Abyss and the gods and was further enhanced by Piero. And it would go the same route for Sandrone too as Sandroni is allowed her continued research into ruined constructs with Dottore pursuing his research into human experimentation. Take it what you will, but Piero is of course a key piece to many of the Fatui's moves which includes creating the fake god that Scaramouche is or what he has become. So if Piero has knowledge of the past and recruited Dottore as well as Sandroni for their extensive research reputation, then why would he need Scaramouche and what would the Fatui need to make a god? From what we know about Gnosis and how they work, a Gnosis is used to resonate with Celestia as well as grant archons their quote-unquote divine ability 
to defend their nation. Anosis can also empower the user very greatly. But even though Archons lose their power by giving up on Anosis, they still of course pack quite the punch. A for example gave up on her Gnosis long ago before we even met her in Inazuma. And we wouldn't have beat her without the help of Yai Miko. And I dare say that we still can't beat her in terms of raw strength. And the same would go for Venti and Zong Li. Venti's resonance with his Animonosis can be as far as a short trip to the Cat's Tail Tavern. Because Venti has more ties with the Windrise tree than he does with his own Gnosis, saying that Windrise helps him recuperate. While Zong Li mentions after ascending him to level 90 that after letting go of his Gnosis, he never thought he'd see the day that he would have his power back again. However, what's interesting about a Gnosis is the fact that it can be modified, albeit with difficulty, and would require a lot of effort and knowledge. But it is still possible. And when you have an uncapped puppet created by an Archon who stole a Gnosis that he may or may not resonate with based on his origins, a person who holds knowledge to make gods, and two mad researchers of bionic lifeforms and robots, you can probably see the main reason why they would want all seven Gnosis in Teyvat and have the absolute steel balls to fight against Celestia. Now what sort of knowledge would Conria or Piero know that would level the gods and cause quote unquote divine punishment as well as allow Scaramouche to become a god? Well at the moment I can think of a few. One is augmented leyline energy and the way ruin constructs work. From what I understand, the use of ley lines as a proper power source for non-vision holders, like the Leyland Extractor in Tinari's story, is the first time we've seen it. The Traveler themselves mentioned it as a line that you could select, and was even stated within that quest that Ruin Constructs flock to concentrations of ley lines as an instinct to survive. Basically, ley line energy is the equivalent of electricity and those huge golems most likely use it as well. But the other bit that I think fits Scaramouche's situation more is through some other knowledge about modifying a Gnosis. Compared to the usual ruin constructs we see, the Scarabot or Ava 1 has purple glowing tubes instead of the usual yellow canisters of energy. It would also fit more because they used an Electro Gnosis which already had what I can assume to be pure Electro energy. Plus the tubes sticking out of Scaramouche's back also being purple. Scaramouche being a discarded creation of A, the Electro Archon, would be the perfect vessel for that Electro Gnosis to synergize with. Now, are the Fatui going to make another six puppets similar to Scaramouche and have them resonate with each of the seven Gnosis that they intend to take? Is the Tore and Sandrone creating a whole squad of gods using what they learned from their very first false god project? Is all this Piero's plan to topple the gods of Celestia? And could this knowledge be what Piero knows that makes him so confident that he can level or even topple the gods of Celestia? Well, that's something I want to talk about in a different video. But for now, there you have it. My interpretation of Scaramouche's situation, the Fatui's overall involvement, and what other plans they might have for the future patches. So comment below what you guys think of Scaramouche's character development in-game, as well as what you think's gonna happen to him in the future, or what else would the Fatui be planning behind the scenes. I hope you guys enjoyed this new upload because it's been a hot minute. I know I've been out of the loop recently and I haven't been uploading in a while, but hopefully Hopefully this new video makes up for that loss in consistency. But other than that, I am absolutely hyped for what Hoyo has in store for Scaramouche's character as well as what other plots the Fatui have. I honestly just wanted to gush about Scaramouche because, well, he's a puppet and just like Albedo and Raiden Shogun, we gotta show our confused puppets some love, right? But regardless, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe as well as hit that bell to stay up to date with my new videos or maybe streams. And if you want to support your boy, go check out my other socials link down below and thanks for watching i'll see you guys in the next video yeah like comment if you enjoyed subscribe for more of my ramblings and stay mad theorists bye